Hi, this is Paul Cockshot. Today I'm going to be talking about cycles in the capitalist economy. And I'm going to use a model of the cycle that was developed in the 1930s by the Marxist economist Kaleski, drawing on ideas from Karl Marx himself. The problem we have to explain is why is the capitalist economy so erratic? Why does it have cycles going up and down? even when there's a basic growth trend. So in this thing we see the cycle of investment, peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. And similarly, peaks and troughs in employment, not so marked, uh, except in this latest recession, but why does it have this structure? Why is there so much unemployment in the downturn? Even when there's an underlying growth trend from the 1940s to, the uh, to, to 2012 or so. What causes this structure? Why do you have a peak, a recession, a trough, then an upswing with a recovery? That's the question that the Marxist economist Kaleski set out to answer. It's worth saying that Kaleski was a Marxist economist. Some people think he was just a Keynesian, but he predated Keynes's work and he based his own work on his studies of Rosa Luxemburg and Marx. And his aim was to have a dynamic mathematical model of the capitalist cycle. And as far as I know, he was the first person to come up with a dynamic mathematical model from the Marxist economists. The background was the Great Depression of the 1930s. And how were we going to explain it? He published in Polish a theory of the business cycle in 1933, which, as I say, drew on Marx and Luxembourg. And this was two or three years before Keynes published his general theory of employment. I would recommend that people watching this video should initially have seen my video on reproduction schemes. This explains the key ideas in volume two of Marx's Capital. And these are the ideas that Kaleski built on to construct a theory of the business cycle. There is some difference in terminology. He uses different symbols for his mathematical variables than Marx. This means that people don't always realize the Marxist origins of his work. But if you look at chapter 7 of his book, Selected Essays in the Dynamics of the Capitalist Economy, Kaleski shows how he derived his equations from those in Capital Volume 2. In what follows, I'm going to be using Kaleski's notation not Marx's notation. But as I say, Kaleski explains how to translate it into Marx's notation. I'm basing it on this book, Selected Essays on the Dynamics of the Capitalist Economy, because this contains his original 1933 paper. Now, let's start off by an analysis of national income, the way Kaleski analyzed it. He said national income, at its simplest, is made up of the income of two classes, the gross profits of the capitalists and the wages and salaries of the working class. And if you add those two together, they become gross national income. You can look at it another way in terms of the things that are being made. There is the production of gross investment goods, there is production of capitalist consumption goods, and production of workers' consumption goods. And together these make up the gross national product. So these are two ways of looking at the same economy. The first is a money view, which looks at the national income in money that the different classes are obtaining. And the second is the production view, in terms of the production process going on. And if you go back to Marx's Capital Volume 2, this is in terms of actual sections of the economy, what Marx calls departments of the economy. But, assuming no imports and exports, gross national income is equal to the gross national product. And it's also a reality of class society that workers are forced to spend all they earn on day-to-day -day consumption. They're not in a position to save and accumulate capital, because if they were, they wouldn't be members of the working class, they'd become capitalists. 
costs. So we can cross out wages and salaries and workers' consumption because all of wages and salaries go on workers' consumption. So that and that are equal. And we know that gross national income equals gross national product, so we're left with gross profit here, gross investment and capitalist consumption. And here we come to Kaleski's key equation. Gross profits are equal to gross investment and capitalist consumption. This is his key result. Gross profit is equal to gross investment plus capitalist consumption. How do we understand this? How do we think of it? Does it just mean that capitalists spend their profit on consumption and investment? Well, they do. That's true. But that's not all of it. That's only half of what he's saying. In fact, if you view it this way, you miss out the causal relationship that's involved. It's not that profits come first and then investment and capitalist consumption come after. No. The direction is the other way round. What Kaleski says is that for the capitalist class as a whole, it's their expenditure that creates their income. It's what they spend on investment and consumption that determines how much profit they'll make. Now this seems very odd because we're not capitalists and our expenditure is determined by our income. But that's not true for the capitalist class. The working class can only spend what it earns. The capitalist class is different. It earns what it spends. The capitalist class is never limited in its ability to spend money. That's why they're capitalists. They've got all the money. They've got masses of money. It's up to them what, how much they choose to spend. And this is a key point that you get from Marx's Capital, Volume 2. Marx shows that money always returns to capital. The structure of the capitalist circulation process is such that any money that the capitalists throw into the circulation process returns to them. Suppose capitalists increase their luxury purchases. Who are they going to buy these from? Well, obviously, they can only buy them from other capitalists. So the money stays within their class. Any luxury consumption that the capitalist class makes, the money stays within the capitalist class. And similarly, if they spend more money on investment, that just means more money is going to those capitalists who make capital goods. It stays within the capitalist class. This is a, a photograph from Kaleski, where he says the conclusion that the increase in capitalist consumption increases in turn their profits contradicts the common conviction that the more is consumed the less is saved. This approach, which is correct with regard to a single capitalist, does not apply to the capitalist class as a whole. If some capitalists spend money, either on investment or consumer goods, their money passes to other capitalists in the form of profits. Investment or consumption of some capitalists creates profits for others. Capitalists as a class gain exactly as much as they invest or consume, and if, in a closed system, they cease to, to construct and consume, they would not make any money at all. So there is a positive feedback mechanism here. If there's an increase in investment, that means an increase in profit. And if capitalists are making more profit, they further increase their investment, which further increases their profit. This explains the upswing of the business cycle. It's a self-reinforcing process. They increase their investment, they get more profit, they increase their investment further, further increase in profit. The whole process accelerates upwards. So he has explained this part of the cycle. But positive feedback also works in reverse. If there's less investment, then they'll make less profit. And if they're making less profit, they'll choose to make less investment, etc. So this explains the downswing 
of the cycle. Now I'm going to just deviate for a moment to de describe some of the terminology and variables that Kaleski uses. Kaleski distinguished between investment orders, which he calls I, which is the placement of an order for a new factory or for new plant and equipment, investment deliveries, which he calls D, and real gross accumulation. Now, the important point is that orders perceive, precede deliveries by several months. In the case of some industries, like shipbuilding, the orders precede delivery by maybe a couple of years. Other industries it's faster. But on average there's a considerable delay. And what he calls accumulation is the work currently being done to produce new deliveries uh, of constant capital. The current rate at which it's being done. Now, with this you can explain the turning point. Investment orders are an increasing function of gross accumulation. That's where you get the positive feedback. And of luxury consumption, L. Um, Kaleski assumes that because the capitalists are so rich they scarcely alter their expenditure as their level of profit varies. They've got sufficient reserves that they can go on living luxuriously even when the rate of profit falls. And he also assumes that orders are a decreasing function of capital stock. He gives the following simple rule for investment. That investment is some constant M times the sum of luxury, consumption and accumulation. Minus a small number N times the capital stock. He has an interesting proof to show that number n must be positive, which you can read in his book. I'm not going to go into it now. But if you're familiar with Marx's theory of the declining rate of profit, whereby the rate of profit declines as the capital stock grows, we can just assume that that is the underlying mechanism. It's not exactly what Kaleski says, but we can assume that that is the underlying mechanism. So, we can explain the first turning point. It means that during the build-up, the boom, the build-up of capital stock, K, that gets bigger and that chokes off investment because the N times K is being subtracted from this term. And once the capital stock gets big enough, this negative term reduces investment to zero and precipitates a recession. The second turning point to end the recession is that in it we're assuming gross investment during the downswing is, is zero, gross accumulation is zero. So the investment is just set by M times the level of luxury consumption. And during the recession capital is wearing out, it's not being replaced, so the capital stock declines, capital is destroyed during a recession. And at the bottom of the recession this negative term becomes too small to offset the positive term here and investment resumes. This is the graph that Kaleski originally produced to show the relationship between them. There are, these are this, this thin solid line are the investment orders. The line D is the investment deliveries. And he has a mathematical argument to show that the total level of accumulation is midway between these. And the capital stock fluctuates during this process. He says the capital stock won't fluctuate as much as investment does because there is a big existing capital stock. Um, now, that is the cycle in Kleski's book, but now that you know what the underlying equation is for the business cycle, you know what Kaleski's underlying equation is, it's easy to regenerate this yourself with a spreadsheet. And here is a uh, curve that I've generated. Here is the investment 
term this is the accumulation term this is the deliveries of capital goods and this is the fluctuation in the rate of profit which occurs during during the course of the business cycle now let me just show you how simple it is to set up such a spreadsheet and I'll share the spreadsheet with you here's a spreadsheet of the Koleski model let's try and zoom out a bit I have months here I'm showing that three month intervals I assume there is a one year delay between the placement of orders and the deliveries um, so if we look at investment orders and investment deliveries orders are here deliveries are here the initial setup is wrong because if you start it from nothing it, 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 it it's in a, uh, a silly state um, but let's look at what the equation is what I have here is M cell J1 multiplied by D and F which are D plus F whoops accumulation and luxury expenditure D is luxury F is accumulation I then subtract N which is J2 times C which is the capital column so that's just Koleski's equation I give it some initial plausible values a capital stock of 30 a luxury expenditure of 15 and set it running by replicating the for all the formulas as I go down I have deliveries set to be the um, let's see delivery here is the accumulation six months earlier and the accumulation six months earlier is the orders six months before that you put that together and it generates the graph here so you can try f playing around with these um, seeing how sensitive they are to the delivery periods how sensitive they are to the these coefficients that he, he identifies there but what has Koleski achieved here he has achieved something that Marx said he was setting out to do which is understand the laws of motion of the capitalist economy the dynamical motion of the capitalist economy he derives the business cycle he derives the oscillations of the capitalist economy mathematically from the premises set by Marx in volume 2 of Capital 